Hey everyone, this is a video tutorial on a suggested outline for your theme analysis paper that you're working on in this class. Um, I wanted to actually provide you with a more modeled example and I was looking back with my work from my students last year and most of them were pretty weak and I think that most of you could do a lot better than what they put together. You have a lot more experience with outlining your papers at this point. Um, so I, I really didn't think that was very helpful. Um, if you find that this tutorial isn't enough and you want me to put together an outline for you to look at as a modeled example, please just send me an email, um, especially since we're doing this distance learning. If there's anything I can do to help you, I, I don't want to sit and um, spend like a lot of time putting together an outline and then nobody ever look at it. But if you're that one person that's going to look at it, I totally think it's worth my time. So please just send me an email if you feel stuck after watching this video, like you need a more concrete example. Um, okay. Uh, there's a reminder at the top that you're, with the exception of your introduction and conclusion, conclusion, each section here should really be multiple paragraphs, and each paragraph needs a separate claim and evidence as you're outlining. Um, those other sections might be different lengths depending on how your paper comes together and how you're organizing it, so that's fine. Um, and you'll eventually use the Toolman method for your body paragraphs, and I really hope at this point that it's a lot easier to write a paper than it was a year ago. Um, and I think all of you have advanced so much in your writing skills in the last two years. Um, that isn't to say that I think it's just gonna be a breeze and no problem and that you're all excited to write your paper, like I get it. But I really hope that at this point, you feel much more prepared for college and like you're gonna go and just have a much easier time um, next year because you're sort of getting to know how this all kind of shapes together and comes together. Okay, in your introduction, you're gonna have some sort of attention grabber. You're gonna have a thesis statement. Your thesis statement needs to answer the prompt. So what is the theme of the work? Make sure it's not just a topic, but it's a theme. And just to remember, remind you of the differences, um, the theme is what the author is trying to say about the topic that you're looking at. So kind of what the argument that the author is making in their book about that topic. And then your thesis statement also needs to briefly explain how the author is developing this theme. What, what's kind of the central conflict that they're using or what's the central symbols or what's the central characterization that they're using to develop this theme. And then you're going to kind of preview some of the main points that you're going working through in your paper. Okay, then you're going to have a short section that's just a background about the novel or play. Um, the context it was written in, the issues it addresses, how it was received. Uh, this is really to kind of draw in your audience and also give them a little bit of context about it. For some of your papers, the context isn't going to matter as much. And for other papers, the context matters a lot. I mean, for instance, if you are writing a theme analysis on a raisin in the sun, the historical context is really important. Um, for the kite runner, it's a little less important, but it's still kind of interesting and I think important to mention that this book was published after September 11th. And one of the reasons that it was so popular is because it kind of gives some insight into um, an area in the world that America had just recently become interested in um, for political reasons. Um, I think also with the kite runner, I, I, I've been recently reading some criticism of the Kite Runner that um, it doesn't really tell the whole story of what's going on in Afghanistan. I mean, Kolek Hazini is one person, um, and he has, even though he is from Afghanistan, he has, in some ways, he's been really influenced by his time in America. And so there's been some Afghani criticism of the book um, and saying that it's kind of a slanted story. And it's a story that kind of sells really well with Americans um, and not necessarily one that resonates with people in Afghanistan. And so I think that's a little bit interesting and important to mention that while this is a really powerful story, it's one story out of this country. And it just because 
you've read this story, you're not some expert on Afghanistan. And, and it was really marketed to appeal to an audience right after September 11th happened. So that's really important um, that it was being sold to Americans. Like that's the audience and Americans who were suddenly interested and wanted to have a, a certain view of Afghanistan. Um, okay, so background, you're gonna include some background, um, but this section does not need to be that long, like probably a paragraph. Um, and then you're gonna give some plot summary. I know right here that I have like a, B, C, D, E, F with all the parts of a plot. And I am always doing this. Y'all know that. Okay. Um, these do not need to be individual paragraphs here. These are just reminders to you that a plot contains these parts. So make sure that you include that. However, your plot summary should not include like everything that happens in the story. This is not the place to like pad your paper. You only have six pages to write, which really is not that much. Your plot summary should really be like a page of that, maybe two pages. So you've really got to condense it and focus on the things that you think are most important to the plot. And the reason you need to do that is because the bulk of your paper should really be analyzing the theme of the work. And this is where you're answering this question. How does the author develop the theme? What are they using here? Again, what symbols are they using to push that theme? What conflicts are developing? What kind of characterization? Um, what kind of motifs are being used? And how do those all connect to the theme? Um, this is not the place where you're summarizing what happens in the plot, but you're really building an argument about what the author's doing with the text and, and what kind of intentional choices the author's making to develop that theme throughout the entire work. Make sure you're using your rhetorical verbs in this section. Um, and this is a really good place to start using your research too, to say like, to really show that you're not the only one who's saying this about the work, that you have experts in the field that also support what you're saying about the work in this place. Um, also make sure you include evidence from the text um, and make sure you cite that evidence from the text um, as you go. Make sure you're using specific details from the novel and not just like something that's in the back of your head that you read like three months ago, two months ago. I don't know. It seems like we've been doing this forever and it's really just been a month, but <laughs> it seems like forever. Okay. Um, and then you are working on your conclusion and you should all know the drill here, but you are summarizing what the argument in your paper has been at this point. And I think at the very end, you can talk about why this work is a significant work. You can talk about why it's still read in high schools or why it should continue to be read, or you can evaluate the work and talk about whether you think the book was good or not and um, kind of pull in those reasons about its significance. All right, so I hope that's helpful for you. Um, I look forward to, to hearing your thoughts as you develop this. Thanks, everyone.